When did it become so cool to watch people brutalized and violently attacked uh, and hurt and sometimes maimed and not say anything? When did it become cool to say that you love people that look like you, uh, that you respect people who look like you, um, that you uh, have a great affinity for people that look like you, but when they need you, you say nothing? When did it be cool to do that? When did it be cool to become, to say how much we love our communities, but say nothing when something happens? When did it become cool to watch people hurt? When did it become cool to watch people take advantage of somebody? When did that become cool? When when did that become the standard to say where you were and who, what kind of person you are? When did it become a, 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 a trademark, a, 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 a testament to your street career that you can say and see something like that and, and see some of the things that go on and don't say anything about it? What does it mean? And every time, the thing that bothers me the most is almost every time something like this happens, There'll always be somebody who sideways defends it. Then when they can't, they will make a half-hearted apology and then tell you things like, you know, and obviously there have been people that have been accused and, and haven't been found and it's been borne out to be innocent. But there have been a lot of people who wasn't. When did it, did it become cool to equivocate? When did it become cool to dance between the line, to nuance things that you know are wrong? Would it be cool to you if the same thing that was happening to that woman, a uh, young woman, happened to somebody you loved? Would it be cool to you if the same thing that happened to Megan Thee Stallion happened to somebody you love? Would that be cool? Because we can't have a situation where things only matter if there's somebody you think is worthy of your empathy and sympathy. If, if it's somebody you can relate to. I, I, I've liked a great many people. A great many people who have done things that I can no longer abide and I can't associate with them anymore. A great many people. But I think I think it depends on how we look at the people who've been brutalized and how we look at the people who are doing the brutalizing. What what level of, 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 of space we will give them and what level of empathy conversely we'll give somebody else. When did it become cool to not see something and say something and do something? But when did that become cool? I just don't understand when this mechanism got switched in some people's heads that it's only if somebody's worthy of my attention, if they're worthy of my respect, if they're worthy of my sympathy. People just can't be human. They have to look a certain way or do a certain thing or be from somewhere. When I was a little boy, I remember growing up in my neighborhood and I only imagined and I was very young and I only loved and respected the people in proximity to me. What a small world that was. What a small myopic mind that was. But when you grow up, you do better. When you know better, you do better. We know that these things are wrong. We know them. There's no need for nuances. There's no need for equivocation. There's no need for, well, you know, you never know. You saw what you saw. And inside that id that you still have, that conscience you still have, knows that it's wrong. We were all born with something in us innately that told us what was right and what was wrong. And we shouldn't let anybody, anything or any situation silence that, particularly when we need it the most. That's a little note from the GED section. Got a jazz report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.